is a capital campaign? First, it is a major gift fundraising effort. That and you know we're not you know we're not looking for chump change. We are looking for gifts. <clears throat> we're not looking for the annual giving perfunctory gift. Yeah, I'll give you a hundred. I'll give you two hundred. We're looking for gifts that's more in line with one's portfolio capabilities. That's what we're looking for in major giving fundraising. More in line with their portfolio capabilities. That's going to require a lot more intensive prospect research. So you know how deep somebody's pockets go, what kind of steam they have, okay? Capabilities. It's a major gift fundraising effort extended over a three year, five year, sometimes even seven year, depending on the, the number. A lot of times universities, they'll give you, you know, a big number, and you can have five to ten years to make that, you know, it's typically longer. Emory had to do that when they raised a billion dollars. It just took them some time. You know. But, you know, there you go. Uh, major gift fundraising gift extends over a period of years for a specific dollar amount. You have a goal that requires an outlay. Right. And in capital campaigns, we are working hard to align the five R's. You got to have the right person, a right volunteer, a right staffer. Ask the right prospect for the right amount that's calibrated to their portfolio capability. It may be somewhat similar, congruous to annual giving, may or may not be. For the right component, some people give to athletics, some people give to programs, some people give to cardiac, some people give to oncology, some people give to literature, some people give to math, you know right person, at the right prospect, for the right amount, for the right component, at the right time. At the right time. <clears throat> and you have to be parent, you know, pastor. Uh, death in the family, something like that. Uh, you know, you want to be you want to be sensitive to, to what's going on in somebody's life. Also, if you if you know somebody hit a windfall profit and it's got tax concerns, uh, that's, you know, the star of our line, in my, in my opinion. It's the right time. So anyway, uh, questions to ask yourself for capital campaigns. Do you need the money? Or duh. And if you don't, why not? You know, it may be that you're not pushing the envelope enough. Uh, you have a convincing case. Okay, big thing, big deal. You gotta have leadership, leadership, leadership. Campaign leaders, campaign steering committee members. And by the way, this is a great testing ground for future board members. If they go through the trial by fire of being a volunteer for your campaign, major gift campaign, you know, if they do well, if they flourish, you know, these are the people you kind of want to graduate up to your, your board, okay? Uh, do you have enough staff? Do you have the right array of, of staff? Do you have good access to funding? Do you have a good system for acknowledging gifts and pledges? And note that there's a difference between acknowledging and sending thank yous. One is more formal. One has acknowledgement, has all the <coughs> IRS gift substantiation language, no gifts or services were exchanged, uh, you know, when you gave us that, you know, thousand dollars. A thank you is by, by means more social, from either a volunteer, you may not have the specifics of thank you for your gift of a thousand dollars, it just may be thank you very much for your generous gift, just people like you make us what we are, you know, it's just more social. But it should be both. Formal, informal. 
uh, and it should be prompt, by the way. Acknowledgements especially need to be prompt, prompt, prompt. You know, in just in no more than a handful of days before you get that acknowledgement. Okay. Uh, do you have a sense of urgency? It's all, always good to imbue a sense of urgency into a campaign. Uh, it's good to have these artificial, even if you have to create artificial hurdles, you know, you, you kind of need to give people a sense of, we have this to jump. You talk about um, artificial hurdles, one thing that came to mind too is, is these matching challenges that you can, if you're really needing, a, you know, some front money or you need it by a certain date, let people know we've got a, an anonymous donor who's going to match dollar for dollar up to this amount or up until this date or something to, you know, show some urgency. So you can play it a lot of different ways. Because you don't have to lie, you can just create a donor that's going to do that. <laughs> Another kind of artificial hurdle would be um, <clears throat> you have kind of a pre-public phase in a capital campaign and then a public phase. You want to try to have about 70% of your money in before you kind of go public. And so a lot of times you can juice your steering committee by saying, listen, you know, we got to make some real calls quick so that we can be at 70% by the time we go public. So there, there are just a lot of little things you can do to kind of imbue a sense of urgency. And there's probably going through these questions too. When, if you're thinking about a campaign, these questions here that you can ask yourself will also help you answer, or whoever will help you answer if you do a feasibility study. And like we were talking about earlier when Patrick mentioned the gap analysis, you know, that's a lot of these uh, things that you need to ask yourself can be answered for those methods. Do you need to hire a consultant? Well, yeah. Um, <laughs> let me tell you the, the, the role of the consultant. The assumption is y'all can raise X amount on your own. The consultant is there to help you raise the but for money, but for our advice and counsel and, and sophistication, you won't be able to raise this additional amount. So that's kind of how we, you know, are kind of worth the, the investment. We're able to give you kind of a bit of an exponential down. Okay. Have you ever done a feasibility study and then get the capital campaign? In what? And they did go forward with the campaign. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, 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 if they're not in the position to be successful, we will give them the, the suggestions, the, the recommendations, the tools, whatever we need to, to help them be successful and we'll re approach. Um, but yeah. yeah Sometimes it's a change of leadership, too. That, that yeah. happens yeah. a lot. We do a feasibility study, there's some issues that happen, and you got to put it on hold for a little while. You know, there's one feasibility study that we bumped into the fact of this kind of fair that wasn't out, but you know, it just, you know, just they had to kind of go underground for a little while. And so there's these real life things that can come out that, that point you in a direction of just now is not the time. That was one of the more dramatic ones, let's put it that way. You know, but these things happen. There's, you know, and there are a lot of things that can get in the way. I remember another feasibility study <laughs> found out somebody was fleecing the organization. You know, and that that, that is a big B bummer right there. <coughs> that is a big B bummer. So anyway, okay. Uh, what is the role of the the board? And you've been on the board. I mean, yeah. Uh, and I can tell you that it's uh, it was scary at first, but it worked out really well. Uh, board members, absolutely, number one, they must give in a campaign. Um, number two, what we like to do is get that group together to help us identify other potential leadership donors, uh, major donors. Um, sometimes we also get uh, uh, these lists put in front of them. What do you know about these people? Do you know them? Uh, are you the one that needs to make the call to, to get them, you know, closer? Are you the one that needs to cultivate them? Would they rather someone else cultivate them? So, and it's all confidential, obviously, but we sit around and do that with the board. So that's, that's important that they help in that process. Um, they're also out there talking about organization. Um, you know, we want to make sure that they're uh, 
uh, obviously putting the organization in the best light, um, saying about the great things that, that, that has happened at the organization while they're involved, that sort of thing. Um, so that's really the major part. So occasionally you'll look up and have a few good board members that are comfortable with asking, are good with asking. Um, we can train just about anybody, but it still takes a personality that we can't quite train. Um, so if you have some of those people on the board that are willing and can ask, then I would, I would recruit them to do that. If they can't ask, if they don't want to ask, can they cultivate? Can they give us names? Can they? Um, so they're, they're a big part of the board, a uh, big part of the process of the campaign. Um, leadership as well. But, but as a board member, when I went through it, I just remember you know, I would go to board meetings, yes, okay, agree, disagree with that. But in between, I was the mom, because you know, I had my kids there. It went from that to, I mean, I had three hats. I had a board member hat, I had, you know, I'm a donor, and I'm a, a, a donor and a solicitor. Um, I'm a mom, and, you know, I was on all these other roles. Uh, but as a board member, we really just had a focus. You know, we'd kind of been like this, and then all of a sudden we had this focus. So you have to have board members, active board members that are prepared to focus for a significant time. And I say significant, it may not be significant to some people, but during the first part of the campaign. They may be part of the feasibility study, um, they may be uh, calling up some people that we want to interview in the study that may not be interested until that board member says, you know, I would like to hear from you. Uh, so that be, maybe, maybe calls even that early is from the study. Um, during the campaign, they're make, be making calls, uh, visiting people, that sort of thing. So, so your board members need to know that it is going to take a little more time than they're used to, if possible. If they can just provide names or whatever, just let them know there's there's these options. I mean, you have options. Where do you find your talents? Uh, you know, is it asking? Is it cultivating? Um, so, just kind of find out what they're willing and able to do. And if they just need some training, that's very important. We just need to get in there and train or have someone get in there and train them and make sure that they know how to, if someone says no, okay, how are you going to follow up with that? Um, you know, if someone says, you know, not now, okay, so then what are you going to say? So there's all, all this, these things they have to be prepared for. I've, I've heard some crazy things, so you got to be prepared for them. Calder tells what good one where, you, you know, you ask and sometimes you're not quite sure. It's kind of art, and a little bit of art, and a little bit of, uh, science, but he had asked uh, for a gift, and the person said, "Dream on." <laughs> so Calder came back and said, "That's what we do here at XYZ organization. We, we dream, you know. That's pretty good." <laughs> so he came back with some of those things. Um, yeah, dream on was funny. Yeah. So just make sure that your board is very well versed um, in the campaign itself. The, the, even if they're not involved in all aspects, they need to understand what's an administrative assistant doing. Oh, she's calling for appointments. So. Um, you know, what is the development director doing? Oh, this is what they're doing. So they can always be aware of the development who to contact. Um, I think that the, some of the other responsibilities of the board members is um, they have to brace the organization. If the campaign's not prepared well, the annual giving can take a hit if you don't, if you don't uh, take the measures you need. Uh, you know, takes money to, to raise money, you're going to have to, to kind of look at the investment levels uh, to see how much uh, cash you have on hand to pay the front costs of a, of a capital campaign. But what we always are, are very careful about doing is asking people to give to the capital campaign over and above what they give annually, year in, year out, to the organization. We do not want the organization to die on a vine operationally as we're raising all these all these big monies. The other thing that a board member board needs to think about is is not only the short term financing but the long term. A lot of times the organization will need to take a bridge loan out in order to uh, you know that will be repaid over over time. Could be through the five years of the life of the capital campaign in uh, you know income. But it also could be, you know, in theory, if you build another building, you may need to, you know, you may be able to have more butts and chairs, which raises your tuition, which means that you not only have philanthropy 
uh, paying, you know, paying the loans, but you have an increased uh, tuition revenue coming in that can pay the loans. So, you know, you may be able to increase your census, so to speak, in healthcare or human service. So there, there are a lot of different moving parts in the financial picture, and it's the board that ultimately has to kind of sign off on all that because the board, at the end of the day, they're the fiduciaries. The best definition I've ever heard of what a fiduciary is is when somebody explained to me, Rob, that means you can't be sued. You know, so the buck stops with the board um, more so than you know than staffers, more so than consultants. So there, there is you know a, a certain uh, nobody can no board member can go into a capital campaign with any kind of a cavalier attitude. A lot of times, I did. I was terrified. Yeah, you should do. You should do. A lot of times, organizations. I, I had a, a Mississippi Children's Home Service had to put their property, you know, uh, as as collateral because you know back in the recession, you had to, you know, you had to put it all there because of just you know the times. But no risk, no reward. Um, what kind of development staff gifts and abilities do you need or is it best to have during the life of a capital campaign? I'm just, just curious, you know, what, what kind of, what, what an array of some of the gifts and abilities, you know, in, in the, in the um, mature uh, development staff situation? Uh, history with a donor. History, okay. And that's hard sometimes when there's so much turnover in development. Yeah. Ooh. Trying to keep that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it really pays off to try to keep an asset, you know, with that historical knowledge, with that donor knowledge, things like that. So I would hope that development office would have people who write well. I would hope that development office would be people who would have the gifts and abilities for major gift officers. These are people that are typically high touch, less high tech, more high touch. Okay. Um. <laughs> so, uh, so those are some of the some of the things. The other thing you want to make sure before all this influx of money is that your internal controls are airtight. Your internal controls are airtight. Okay. Maybe your policies and procedures. Policies and procedures, but you want to make sure that uh, the person who's opening the checks is not the person who's signing checks. You know that that you know that there are some that would be the some redundancies and uh, things like that. You need to follow the accounting practices. Yeah, that are yeah. There's a paper trail. Make sure that there's the paper trail. Make sure that all checks are accounted for. In small offices, small uh, fundraising, I'm sure you guys have dealt with these kind of places too. Sometimes there's like one person that do all the steps, so he, he or she has to open the letters, write yeah. the bill letters, enter yeah. the enter the computer, all that. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, if the paycheck is say over five hundred dollars, sometimes <coughs> there's a duplicate. You know, a second signature is is required. So that, that may save. I mean, you know, that may save. Um, so. Uh, there, there, there's that. Um, oh, be particularly careful about cash. Yeah. And um, and make sure you know there are a lot of times that um, you know at, at athletic events or some things like that where there's some you know paying for the ticket to get in. Just just make sure that there's a redundant effort there. Uh, you get you get. Sometimes people still send cash in the mail. To me, oh, yeah. the best way is yeah. to take that cash, the envelope, and it has that dollar amount the person wrote. Put it on the copy or put the cash that came in, yeah. copy it yeah. as oh, a yeah. paper trail. Yeah, make, make sure, all of that. Because you don't want anybody to think you're not a good steward. 